Happy 2026, everybody. I hope you had a restful holiday and are ready to jump right in to something that has been bothering me since the start of the new year. If you are taking medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, Maugero, or Zepbound, you are probably referring to them as weight loss drugs. The media calls them weight loss drugs. Your friend calls them weight loss drugs. But I am here to tell you, if you view them only as weight loss drugs, you are fundamentally misunderstanding how they work. And here is the kicker. If you think one of these shots is doing the weight loss for you, that misunderstanding is one of the biggest reasons people end up regaining the weight. So here's the truth that almost everyone gets wrong. These are not weight loss medications. These are appetite regulators. And understanding that subtle difference is the single most important factor in your long-term success. So let's break down exactly what that means for your biology for 2026. So why do I say they're not weight loss drugs? It sounds like semantics, right? You take the shot, the number on the scale goes down. Isn't that weight loss? And technically, yes. But weight loss is the result, not the mechanism. You see, when we label them as purely weight loss drugs, we start to think of them as a fat burner. We think the drug is magically dissolving fat cells, but that's not what is actually happening. The problem with obesity and the struggle that you are facing with your weight isn't that you're lazy. It isn't that you lack willpower. The foundational problem is appetite dysregulation. And some of you might refer to this as emotional eating or maybe food noise. You can think of it this way. The meds don't directly cause weight loss, but instead they remove the biological friction that makes weight loss feel impossible. Now, I want you to imagine your appetite is like the thermostat in your house, except for many of us, that thermostat was designed for a house where food was very scarce and not around a lot. And therefore, in our current houses, it starts to read the temperature wrong. It thinks you're starving when you've actually just eaten a full meal. And these medications simply recalibrate that thermostat. They regulate appetite. And when you fix the regulation, weight loss follows as a side effect of that. And the question is, why is our appetite dysregulated to begin with? Why is that thermostat acting up? Well, it's not technically broken. That thermostat was just designed for a world that existed 30,000 years ago. It's due in part to pure physiology, biology, and your genetics. Some of us are just wired this way, but it's also due to what I call the collision. It is the collision of our ancient biology with our modern food environment. We are surrounded by ultra-processed, hyper-palatable foods. They are delicious, they are everywhere, and they are engineered to override all of your stop signals for satiety. And some of you might have even noticed this over the holidays. Maybe you had a few additional food items this holiday season, like some cookies, or in my case, Nanaimo bars. Shout out to my Canadians, you'll know exactly what I mean. And suddenly, you're back on your regular routine, but you might find yourself craving or wanting some sugary treats or a little snacky snack after dinner. Actually, let me know in the comments below, what is your kryptonite? Are you a sweet snacker like me, or are you more one of those salty people? I'm curious to hear what your thermostat gets stuck on. Drop your comments down below. And listen, whatever you typed is totally normal. Again, this isn't a lack of willpower. It wasn't because God forbid you decided to have a little extra snack or treat over the Christmas holidays. This is biology saying, hey, those Nanaimo bars were fucking delicious. Eat more. Because if this was a matter of just eating less and moving more, well, you wouldn't be sitting here watching this video and I wouldn't have a job. And unfortunately, you can't just willpower your way out of a dysregulated thermostat. What these drugs do is act as a shield against the environment. They quiet down that noise. And this brings us to the uncomfortable truth. What happens when you stop the medication? And this is where the distinction between weight loss drug and appetite regulator becomes critical. Since these drugs don't cure the underlying biology, they just manage it. When you then remove the drug, that appetite dysregulation comes roaring back. But it's actually worse than that because not only does the old hunger return, but your biology fights back even harder. And that's because your body hates losing weight. Your biology doesn't care about your goals. It doesn't care that you have a wedding coming up or that you've got a beach vacation planned in a couple months. 
It cares about survival. It's basically a paranoid roommate that is hoarding calories for the apocalypse that's starting on Tuesday. Evolutionarily, weight loss is a threat to survival. So, when you lose a significant amount of weight, your biology gets very cranky. It gets upset, and it wants you to regain the weight in order to keep you safe. So you come off the medication, your shield is gone, and you are back in the same obesogenic environment. And now you have cranky biology working against you, ramping up your hunger hormones and that damn food noise. And let me know in the comments, does this resonate with you? Have you ever lost weight only to feel like your body is fighting against you to pack that weight back on? Type yes in the comments if you have ever felt that cranky biology kicking in. And if you typed yes down below, you're not crazy. You're actually experiencing exactly what the clinical data shows us. In the major step one clinical extension trial for semaglutide, participants regain two thirds of the weight that they had lost one year after stopping the medication. Two thirds in one year. Again, this isn't because they failed. What happened is they removed the regulator and their biology went back to doing what it does best in an obesogenic world. So where does that leave us? There's this narrative out there that you use this drug to learn how to eat right, and then you stop the drug. But the reality is a majority of the people that go and stop the medication are gonna end up regaining the weight. Because while you can control what's going on in your own kitchen, you can't control the outside world. We live in a food environment that is aggressively engineered to take advantage of your biology. And unless we see massive changes in government policy, societal changes, and so on and so forth, we are still going to be living in this very obesogenic environment. And to give you another analogy and a way that I think about this whole process, if your internal thermostat is set for the Stone Age, these medications are the air conditioning of the modern world. Do you need air conditioning to survive? Technically, no. You could survive in the sweltering heat, but life is miserable, you're sweaty, uncomfortable, and just trying to cope with the ridiculous heat, and that's all that you can focus on. So the medication is the AC that keeps your house livable so that you can function. It cools down the heat of the food noise, and it enables healthy behaviors such as eating less, moving more, and managing inflammation, which were damn near impossible when that heat was cranked up to 100. And if you take away the enabler, you're likely gonna lose the health benefits. Again, not because you're weak, but because the tool that enabled those behaviors is gone. And listen, navigating this modern obesogenic food environment alone is exhausting. And that is why I created Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. It is your home for science-backed weight management support and a place where you can hang out with me live in real time every single week. And best of all, you get to connect with a community of people that get it and are there to help you along the way. So go to drdanshub.com or to the pinned comment down below and start your 14 day free trial today. Let's stop fighting with biology in isolation. So does this all mean that you're stuck on these medications for life? For many people, yeah, that's probably gonna be the case. These are lifelong therapies to manage a chronic biological condition. And we need to stop stigmatizing that. But this is also your journey and it's choose your own adventure. And if you wanna try coming off the medication and navigating the food environment and your biology on your own, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You're welcome to give it a try. See how your biology responds, but do it with eyes wide open, knowing what you're up against. My goal for 2026 is for you to stop fighting with your biology and instead start respecting and understanding it. And if you want more of this real talk approach to obesity medicine, then you best smash that subscribe button and make sure you turn on those notifications so you never miss out when I put out another video. And let me know in the comments, do you see these medications as a short-term fix or are you looking at using them for long-term air conditioning? I'm Dr. Dan, stay healthy, and remember, those small tweaks are what lead to those massive peaks.